here with unquantized and quantized recording artist Jay Eclectic. What's happening? What's happening? What's yeah. Happening? All right. I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm good. Very good. How are you guys? Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Great. So you guys have an album coming out. It's called Our Story. Tell us a little bit more about it. Okay. You want to lead off with it? Basically, um, this is a compilation of music that we've come up with that is really deriving from where we've come from. Okay. Um, Maurice being born in London and myself being born here in the United States in Baltimore. Now. Interesting. So Very interesting. What we basically, did is we compiled some music that basically expressed our story that we've endured through the time of our birthing up until this very moment, the different um, adversities that we've experienced, um, you know, our peaks, our valleys, our victories that we've had, and it all comes out in the compilation of music that we have coming out. Yeah. All right, yeah, because your your music is is very interesting. It, it, there's kind of like this spiritual side to it. Then you've got kind of like the raw underground hip hop side to it, and then you've got like you know the 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 just kind of um, I don't know, Tommy. What do we call it? Kind of like deep house sort of sort of influenced um, tracks that you guys right. are doing. Um, sort of all put together in like this one package, yes. which is like really good. So <clears throat> what are, or who, shall we say, are your influences? I think uh, for, for myself, some of my biggest influence actually have been Herbie Hancock. Really? Herbie Hancock has been a huge Y'all heard that here first, that's hardcore. A huge influence in, in especially in the arrangement of how we do our music. Right. Um, from a musical perspective. Okay. Um, from a, DJ perspective because we're both DJs myself and Jay we we encompass a lot of people but for myself my biggest influences have been yourself charisma right. um, definitely um, he, he took me under his wing for a, a moment and gave me some tutelage in regards to DJing and the production you, I've just been watching you for years. You and Tommy, so it's just watching your style and, and how you, how we say Tommy's an entertainer. Oh uh, yeah, he he's entertains. That. <laughs> Definitely, he entertains the crowd, and <laughs> you are a professional on the turntable. So I encompass all of that okay. in, into what I do, and I've been able to share that knowledge um, with with Jay. Okay, and he is now moving into that realm of, of the DJing aspect. But from a production, it's it's so many people. My biggest influence, Herbie Hancock from the um, instrumentation side. Uh, but my biggest influence production-wise, drums and everything else, is none other than Jay Dilla. No one else. Right. He, he is in every track that we do. Okay. Henceforth, the title on one of the tracks right, on the right, album, right, right. Horns and Donuts. It's right. our tribute to Jay Dilla. Okay. Um, so it's 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 major for us. The track is a killer, by the way. <laughs> straight, <laughs> straight out now Thank killer. You. What about you, Jay? What who who are your influences or what influences you? I have a plethora of influences. I was raised in the church. Um, I was a drummer for a very long period of time. I played R and B, gospel, um, jazz as well. So my influences would be uh, first, Earth, Wind, and Fire is definitely one of my influences. I think for Jay Eclectic, I am the individual that brings more of the soulful aspect to it because okay. of what I grew up listening to. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as Earth, Wind, and Fire, Walter Hawkins with gospel. Yeah. Um, you know, and even jazz artists as well. Um, Herbie Hancock is definitely someone that mm -hmm. I admire. Miles Davis is someone that I grew up listening to as okay. well. So um, as far as house music is concerned, I've always had a liking for house music, but did not really, really dive that deeply into it until I met um, Mr. Eclectic and also another good friend of ours, um, percussionist Davon as well. Okay. Um, so they kind of introduced me to house music and I always had a liking for it but didn't know how to find it in sure. order to listen to it <laughs> sure. um, all the time. So I've, I've really grown to really 
have a great appreciation for house music and especially the production that comes with it. And I've been highly influenced um, by yourself before I even met you and Tommy. I was listening to a lot of your music, the Basement Boys especially. Um, Charisma definitely is someone that I admire a lot. Mm -hmm. And melodically and um, beat-wise, I have a high regard for at jazz. Um, oh, so that okay. is someone that I listen to and I basically try to study. And if you right. notice, a lot of our music encompasses all these artists that we mm -hmm. that we spoke about from a production side. Right. Um, when we get into the church vibe, you know that it reminds us of Spin and Tommy. You know, when we get into that that gospel, you know, that real vocal, it reminds me of, of you know we encompass you guys. You know, okay. When we want to get into our drums and our heavy. You know, we, we, we look towards uh, charisma and that jazz and, and, and we encompass Dilla and, we, and, and of course, um, you know, Flying Lotus. We love the, ray, the way that they just, or he actually just arranges mm -hmm. his drums and the sound. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, let, let, let's uh, get into a, a really um, interesting sort of question because the, the groups are very difficult. Especially, uh, historically, groups are very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Tommy and I, uh, you know, we were both uh, basement boys. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there was, a, there was a, a time period where, you know, we were together, then we weren't, then we were together, then we weren't. Um, I guess it sort of leads me to the question is, what do you think is the common vibe between the two of you that make J Eclectic what J Eclectic truly is? God, period, point blank. We put him first, period. If we're having a problem or a dispute about music that we mm -hmm. may like or don't like or sound, just pray on it. You know, if, 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 it, if it wasn't for us or if it wasn't for him, we would not be doing this at all. So uh, is everything perfect? No. Right. Is, there's no group out there you can say is perfect. Prime example, look at Chad and Pharrell right. from the Neptunes, you know. And Pharrell had a vision, and he wanted to follow his vision. Chad had a vision, and he was, you know, he wanted Pharrell to stay, but Pharrell, you know, Pharrell had a bigger vision, and he went after it, but they didn't stay together. Right. And we've we've had that question come up a lot. Yeah. Um. But first thing is first, we started this together, and we're gonna end it together. Yeah. And I <laughs> think that you know, when when you put God first in anything, you know, which is what you know, Tommy and I make no. Right make no, uh, you know, small talk about the fact that, you know, quantize and unquantize. <laughs> All day. All day. You know, we just kind of, yeah, we, we just kind of uh, are managers of what God has allowed us to be able to be a part of. All right. So let's talk about the album a little bit more. We've already talked about Donuts and Horns. Yes. Um, what else is on the album? And, and within... Uh, within, I guess, that question more so is what if you had to say, and, and I'm, I'm saying this individually, all right, what would you have to say is your favorite piece and why? Right. <laughs> Personally, <laughs> my favorite track is the Horns and Donuts. Okay. That's my personal favorite track. Um, the reason being is because it infuses so many different things. Right. Um, but it definitely gives off a great hip hop feel to it, with still a house feel at the right. same time. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I really, really admire about uh, Mr. Eclectic and myself is how we can take different things and infuse it and still give it a feel good mm -hmm. feel. Okay. For me, it's. Uh I'm gonna be honest with you. It's kind of a neck and neck tie. It's it's difficult for me to pick between which one, but it, it's donuts and horns. But it's met you yet with Dana Weaver. Okay. Um, she bodied that track. She really just put it to when when we originally did it. Um, we thought it was it was okay. You know, it was a nice track. You know, as producers, you know, you hear a track and you come back the next day and like eh, it was hot last night. But today right. it's it's okay. But Dana heard it when I posted it, just a snippet of it, and five minutes later, with no exaggeration, five minutes later, she had sent me a hook and a first verse back off of what I posted 
on Facebook. Uh huh. So then what wound up happening months later, we got into the studio with you guys. And that's when we had the aha moment, the epiphany. Because Jay and I were sitting in the background watching you work with her on the vocals. Mm -hmm. And we could not stop watching the way you were bouncing your head <laughs> off the track. And yeah. Jermaine and I looked at each other and I said, I think we might have something here. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah. Those two tracks for me are the, are the ones. All right. All right. As what I'm going to call up and coming producers, because of the fact that I know that, that this thing is going to be bigger, wider, probably stronger than any of our imaginations. And, and I, I say that because Tommy and I, out of everybody who we work with, um, you guys bring a fresh sort of a perspective to music in general. Um, it's, 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 it's kind of unusual that we are able to work with producers and producers who I'm going to say are so close to home mm. um, that have the same kind of musical sensibility that you guys have. So, my last question is what is it that you would say to a young producer or a producer who really wants to kind of get into doing um, music in general? Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody who just walked up to you and just said, listen, I want to do what you're doing. How did you guys do it? And what do you suggest that I do? I would highly suggest to them that one, study your craft. Um, and not only that, I think the biggest thing that helps any artist, any producer become successful is being consistent. and never having a mindset of it's an option for me to give up okay but to make sure that you go after what it is that your heart desires um, to make and sure that with god's help you use all the resources that you possibly can to maximize your ability to be able to effect and affect um the world and your craft mm -hmm. um I, again as Mr. Eclectic has already stated that because we are spiritual beings, that's that's our nucleus that helps us get to that point yeah. of where yeah. we need to be. Um, I believe that with us being sewn into by you all, that's something else that I think that any up and coming artists need to have people that mm -hmm. are healthy and that will seed into them and impart wisdom into them and right. lastly i would say and i'll hand it over to mr eclectic is always make sure that you have a teachable spirit yeah absolutely. and never get to a point where you feel like you cannot be taught anything else because i believe no matter how far you get no matter how many awards you get no matter how many accolades that you get it's always something for you to be able to learn amen that's true that's right that's true I, I, and jay said it he put it in a, in, in a nice little package for you right um every every wednesday um of the week i have two gentlemen that i actually mentor okay in producing and dj uh one by the name of Dwayne thomas and one by the name of Ryan Hope. Both of the kids, one of the kids, uh, uh, one of my son's uh, best friends, um, and recently broke his wrist, so he couldn't play basketball no more, and he was always interested in what I was doing. So I would just show him little things here and there, and he would come over with his little hip-hop tracks, and I'm right. like, you know, they're nice. Yeah, I like them, they're nice. And he was using his little garage band, and mm -hmm. so he, one day he asked me, what do I need? So I said, this is what you need. These are a list of things to get you started. Right. When you get them, come over. I'll show you some things, and we'll go from there. But the one thing I told him was be dedicated. Don't do this just because it looks fun. Right. And don't do this because you think at, at the end of it that you're going to get this big dose of money. Right. And, you know, you're going to live this fabulous life. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it for that, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Music is spiritual. Without music... And really, you don't have everything you need. Think about everything that's going on right now. The one thing that brings us all together, music. Right. All the festivals, every concert, 
every gig you may have, DJing, right. wherever it right. may be, it brings right. a multitude of people together, mm -hmm. all different cultures, colors, it doesn't matter. So music brings everybody together, and that's why we do what we do. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, J Eclectic. And um, keep in mind, and in the forefront of everything, <laughs> that their album, Our Story, will be available very soon on all formats and all stores. So, Jay Clectic, thank you very much thank for allowing me to do this. Flavor Flav, you got something you want to say? Quantize, <laughs> unquantize. <laughs> Play the play. Play the play. Peace. 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 <laughs> we got more coming.